Welcome back to The Source. The TD Niagara Jazz Festival celebrates the 10th year of its Twilight Jazz Series. Here to fill us in on what's happening for 2021, we have co-founder Juliette Dunn. Welcome to the program, Juliette, and may I say congratulations. 10 years, time flies, it seems like yesterday. It, it totally does, it totally does. I mean, my, my husband Peter and I started our Twilight Jazz Series in 2011. And uh, we, at first we were at Stella's and then we were at um, Mate Cafe and Lounge. And now of course we're doing it virtu virtually because uh, that's what we have to do right now. And then the, the festival we started, that was kind of our lead up to doing a festival and the festival we founded in 2014. So the festival's in eight, year eight, Twilight's in year 10. And here we are. And you know, like currently in Ontario, we're locked down, but our first show of the season was a husband and wife duo. So they live streamed from their house and I introduced from our place. And we're just gonna keep going. And whatever the province says we can or cannot do, we're going to adapt because it's so important to bring music to the people. And it's so important for the musicians to be making music as well. You had a very successful 2020, you really, flew by the seat of your pants to put together a lot of this material when you had to cancel in-person events. How are you going to keep that going for 2021? So, you know, like last year, it was really kind of, wow, what's gonna happen, right? And, and we, so many festivals were, in March of last year, in April, festivals still thought they'd have festivals and outdoor events. And as, as things progressed, we realized no. So it was really hard because you kind of plan for the best and then the best didn't happen. So this year we're like, let's just start with what's the worst case scenario. Worst case scenario is we're all in lockdown. So what do we do in lockdown? So we'll figure out ways of bringing the music to the people and then we'll just build from there. So we're in lockdown, we can bring people an event, we can bring musicians who are locked down and they can, and they can uh, live stream from there. But then we work from there. Then the best case scenario is we do the same thing for the people who are still at home and the few that are allowed to come out when they say we're allowed to come out, we do, I guess what you call a hybrid event. So it's live streamed, but it's also live for maybe 30, 40, 50 people. And it's kind of a combo. And I, I really don't think in our case that we'll have an event in a park in, in, in the summer or maybe in a winery. We'll do events possibly in wineries with say 30 or 50 people socially distanced. But I think the key is we really have to embrace this live streaming because it's kind of the way of the future. For 2021, I, 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 you are trying a ticketed series, correct, with the Twilight Jazz? Thank you, yes, exactly. Thank you for bringing that up because it's tricky for us, right? We just want to, we want the music to come across, but we did 70 shows last year. Two were in person, the other 68 uh, performances were all online. It was all free which is great and thank you for the government and all of our funding but we can't keep giving away music for free because this is an art form and musicians need to get paid so then the next step is well let's have ticketed events so we've tried two so far we did music for charlie brown christmas on december 23rd and we just did our first one of the twilight jazz series on january 17th Tickets are 19, um, 19 dollars. We do give um, reduced rates for musicians, arts workers, and students for nine dollars. And then we're also trying to partner with, and we are partnering with local restaurants like Club Fifty Five, um, the Deleuze Yacht Club, and Plush Imperial. So far, we're looking for more restaurant partners so that people can stay home, they can drive and get their curbside pickup and have a show and a show and dinner at home, um, and they're still paying for the, for the entertainment because it's it's worth paying for, because these are artists and this is what they do for a living, and it's really worth paying for. And so we're really happy to see that people are embracing that and people are supporting. You're also planning a series that will be shot at White Oaks, is that true? Yes, and so again, you know, I was just speaking with Tracy from White Oaks, we're trying, because our first show is supposed to be February 22nd, but ah, it's because we want to celebrate Black History Month, which is February. So we've got a whole series focused on, on, on Black artists. But now we're like, ah, you know, do we plan to do that one and then have to kind of say at the last minute, oh, it's online only. So we're just trying to figure out what we do with those dates. But, but it is a four part series supposed to start in February and goes to May. And, you know, maybe we'll, 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 We'll put it over to March, we'll see. But um, again, at White Oaks, we can, we've can we done one event there. We can do 35 people, to, between 35 and 40 socially distanced. 
everybody we surveyed who came to the show on October 3rd said they felt totally safe. You know, we screen them as they go in. People don't get to get up and mingle and go up to the bar. It's we, it's table service. It's it's very safe and and everything went well. And we're just gonna and the musicians had you know plexiglass in front thanks to Niagara Glass and and uh, everybody felt really safe, right? So 